Today's adventure brings us out to the barren landscape of Southern California. Not a whole heck of a lot going on in this neck of the woods. Solitude. Welcome everyone, Adam the Woo here. I will be covering a heck of a lot of miles as I traverse different areas of this region to hunt down to find some of Captain Spaulding, played by Sid Haig, his stomping grounds where he lived in Devil's Rejects, where his shop was set up with the Dark Ride and the Oddities Little Museum in House of a Thousand Corpses and a few others. This is going to be quite the exciting episode I'm inviting you to join me, shall we? must be very quiet because the first stop, a bit of production, is still taking place. In fact, Four Aces, this cafe and motel, might look familiar to you from corpses, a thousand of them. This is where the novelty shop was and that diner was the dark ride. They're doing either a photo shoot or filming something at the moment so it can't get too close and you might remember they remove lodging and change it around to say murder gas food and the alternative same sign and everything even though the interiors of the ride itself were done on a sound stage the shop itself was right inside the gas station here all the interiors with all the actors cast and crew all right in there. In fact, the gas pumps are still the same. Here's a screenshot example of what I was referring to with the sign, obviously on a crane shot. And they put this skull demon looking thing over the front entrance of the diner. Fried chicken and gasoline signage in the top right corner as well. Quite a bit of overlay. I also asked if I could get up a little closer and get a better view, even peek in the windows or stand on property and the production that's underhand or taking place. They told me no. Wamp, 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 wamp. And since it is well over 100 miles from my home to out here, this adventure is kind of on a whim and so many other spots to hit up. Gotta be moving on. Whoa, stay in the road. Gotta keep carrying on. I gotta look at life as a glass half full. Just, just watch the road. Next up, even further down the way, is this gas station, which is where Baby made the telephone call to her dad, Captain Spaulding, right over there against the wall. Notice the red pole there on the right of the phone booth and the big signage on the left that has been erected. It looks a little different, but basically the same. My friend Natalie is reenacting the part of Sherry Moon over. I'm calling my dad. And the reason that sign I mentioned was placed here, two different scenes at different places in the movie, and if that sign had not been placed in this spot, you would see the motel right next to where the telephone call was made. Movie magic. I guess that's the really cool thing about creating an illusion. People only see what the camera's pointed at. This is located five or six miles from the last location and just like the previous one it is not open to the general public it is only available for those renting it out for production use it appears as if there are a few people back in there utilizing it for that nature as we speak notice the gate off in the distance there is a pool back there there used to be a pool that is where the young lady came running out and Spalding was right out in this area headbutted her Kind of basically on the other side of this tree you're seeing in the foreground. Now the interiors of this spot were also done on a sound stage, but the exterior is room number two. A lot of activity throughout the course of the film took place in there, including where he washed off his clown makeup for the last time. It's not the same ice machine, but that is where one stood where Baby was flirting with Roy. Also the office you can see 
little dangling sign. That is where Brian Passain was talking about how he wanted to become a rodeo clown. And their room would have been all the way at the back end of the premises. <laughs> really need to wash this clown makeup off. <laughs> Easy. That looked really cool. A very dramatic scene. She runs out in the middle of the road trying to wave down help. A car approaches from the right of the screen, passes by, narrowly missing her. And then from the left, a huge truck. Not good. Now, I'm not going to insert the photo because it is a little gruesome, but the body laid right here on the opposite side closest to me of this yellow line, right about there. Doesn't appear to have been repainted since those days. It's been this color for decades. It's kind of faded aqua greenish blue hue. Another perspective screenshot of them dragging him back to his room. All does not end well. All right, moving on. find some really good stuff out here. This place is called Wing and a Prayer. It is no longer open. I wonder if it has anything to do with the, the airplane that crashed into the side of the building. Another two-parter, meaning two locations in one spot. This house and chicken ranch have been abandoned way before the film even took place. I mean, who would have known where Otis took the two band members for their final moments? Off in the distance there, would be located behind Captain Spaulding's very homestead. In the backyard, to be precise. There are more than its fair share of disturbing scenes in that movie, and one of them took place right back there. Now it's not his personal homemade recipe, but it's good to see that still consuming some tasty fried chicken. The driveway is very dusty. This is where he peeled out of. As I walk up a little bit closer, peek through this fence, and you can see the very angle that was used as he walked out that door next to the garage and hightailed it. Does state beware of dog. And this gentleman that's walking towards me, I tried, tried asking him if I could walk through the gate and into that open door, but a little bit of a communication issue. So I don't think it's gonna happen. I do not want to trespass without permission as much as I would love to get inside that house. One thing that's pretty neat about this is the location scouts were just driving by and they saw it and they said, we should probably use this. It's kind of a, kind of a good location for him to live in and the rest is history. It pretty much looks identical. It wasn't really up to par when he resided here. And it's deteriorated just ever so gently since those days. Very eerie. Probably best we can't set foot back there. It's kind of frightening on its own accord, even without Otis running around. Just for reference, a couple quick screenshots. Where he's pulling out of the driveway. That's when he was coming out the side of the garage. You see, pretty much looks the same now. to give this yet another shot because you never know it looks like the majority of those that were working over here have kind of moved to a different area of the premises 
Pretty cool that the dark ride was overlaid on the diner there. The phone booth that she called her dad from would have been tucked away in that corner there. Once again, I asked if I could get a little closer. I was told no. I just want to line this up with what it looked like for the film. And here is that same angle with the overlay. Looks pretty different, yet very similar, right? Covered quite a bit of ground. I'm now on Soledad Road and about a half mile that direction. He ran out of gas and needed a commandeer. Another vehicle. It sure is quiet out here. Rio's Groceries, which is a little convenience store in this dirt parking lot, is the location of two different scenes, one of which Natalie is standing where a phone booth would have been. What happened in this precise location? Where Spalding called his brother from another mother. Very close in proximity, to be exact. Oh, there comes a truck. Maybe that one's not. Oh, is it running out of gas? A little scene reenacting. Propane tank still here can be seen in many of the shots. Right about here, he stated that he was on some top secret clown business. It was called Buck's Grab and Go. That's exactly what he did. Except not with groceries. He did it with a vehicle. Grabbed it and went. Two examples. One there and the other. See the propane tank? Even spelled out towards the bottom of the screen. On the Golden State Highway, as you can see, not a whole lot of other cars. From here on in, have to hoof it. No cars allowed. A little bit of a hike. The miles and miles of road that I was driving in on before made me exit and walk can be seen in the closing credit sequence. And straight ahead is the ambush right up there where that big tree on the left is in the bridge. Originally, my game plan was to match up some of the little road indentations and the marks but as you can see they have repaved it since then even though some of these look familiar none of them match up that being said the car would have been parked right here straight ahead all the police had their barricade tree on the left Rock formations on the right. Once again, the yellow lines in the middle have been changed. But you can see the police barricade off in the distance where the bridge starts in that little parking area to the left. They gunned it and went full force. Gunning it, no pun intended, because, you know, they, they had guns. The camera starts on the grill and then kind of makes its way up over the three characters looking down and where that was someone has placed a heart right there on the on the pavement also straight ahead is where these officers were stationed see the bridge That's a security guard. Are they still on the loose out here? I thought they got them. Full speed ahead towards where I'm standing. And they would have all been lined up from here, across, behind their police cruisers. The bridge, the wood, Work. Looks like it's seen better days, starting to kind of fall apart. Ooh, it even looks like it may have caught fire. 
structure has been here since 1932. Not a lot get to see it with their own eyes because this is closed off to normal traffic. You never see what happened at the end of Devil's Rejects. Did they bust through the barricade and then careen off the side of this? This is all in my imagination. This isn't part of the film, but... A nice bubbling brook down there. That's going to do it for today. If you're new here, please subscribe. By doing so, it helps keep you in the loop and up to date on future uploads here on this channel. Take it a step further. Ring that notification bell. If you enjoyed this particular episode, give it a big thumbs up. It lets me know you care. I'll see you in the next video, the vlog. It is so peaceful out here. Isn't it? Yeah, it's very peaceful. What exactly are these? Are like holes in these rocks? I believe they used this whole stretch for the final shootout. In fact, there's one particular frame. You can see where the security guard is way down there, stopping cars from driving up. But there's one particular frame where Spaulding gets hit by a bullet and you see this behind him. His face is right past here. I think, I think you see that in one of the frames. So obviously they went up and down, multiple takes until they got what they needed. For the completed product. Now there's a smiley, two eyeballs and a grinning face. Mission accomplished. I have to wonder how long is this video going to be when it's all said and done? Well, how long is a piece of string? Keep a keen eye out. The moon has risen. The moon has reared its head. Vlog over. <laughs>